Hey guys, I'm Nate from Good Mayhem Racing. This is the original subframe, at least the front half of it in my 4Runner that we raced the Baja 1000 in. This is what I'm working on to replace it. This is a boxed tubular assembly where this is stamped sheet metal welded all together. And the thing that's really important to note is that Toyota makes these things very durable, but push comes to shove, it's really only intended to survive one crash. So you can see how this thing is mangled and twisted and not straight across anymore like this one. And if you're wondering if that's really a valid comparison with how consistent this is, I have one over there that's way more dialed and way flatter than the mangled piece that I cut out of the truck. These are the new cam tabs. I think the way that the Toyota setup aligns is annoying. However, it is easy to align. And once I know where the alignment is on the truck, rather than having this oval cut out, I'll just have another one of these plates with a hole drilled through it. And that is where my camber and caster is set. This is held on with bolts. This is the rear example and it will be held on by two bolts just because of access in the back. But you get the idea. These things now bend. They take the place of the original cam tab setup. And when these things bend and <laughs> bend a lot, well, now you can replace it because this whole thing yielded and twisted, not just this. So if I can focus that bend failure here, I can just unscrew this thing off, bolt it back on, and voila, I have new cam tabs. That's the idea anyway. So these are 4130. They're quarter inch thick. Some guys say that's beefy, but when you realize that this is also a quarter inch thick with the Total Chaos cam tabs welded on top of it, okay, it's pretty comparable. I got the material cut at send, cut, send. And everything else here is regular uh, high strength carbon steel, like 55, 60 KSI yield stuff, nothing crazy. This stuff is slightly higher around 70, but at the same time, 4130 is an alloy that is very weldable, but it's hard to weld. And what I mean by that is, it is an alloy, 0.3% carbon to be exact, that is very hardenable. You weld on it, it gets hard. So there's two ways to address the 4130 getting hard. Actually, most steels can be treated in the same way, just depending upon how you change up the variables a little bit. But you see how this thing has a dark, rosy halo right here. That's from preheating this base metal before welding it. Once you heat up the metal, you can weld on it and that stops the temperature from getting too cold too fast. And what I mean is, is that when this thing is welding, this is at the melting point of steel, right? It's a liquid metal at that point, around 2000 degrees, give or take. This surrounding material might get red hot, but most of the time, no. It's usually gonna be a temperature that's much colder than red hot or molten, but it needs to be hotter than room temperature. Otherwise, this sinks the heat away so fast that the welds and the heat affected zone around them become brittle. So if you weld 4130, the best way you can weld it is with a preheat. Do yourself a solid and preheat the 4130 before you do. Anything in this quarter inch thick range, uh, if it is annealed 4130, I mean, heck, if you're stuck with normalized too, I guess you can do this as well, but annealed is the preferred material or quench and tempered for welding and it is going to have a preheat of at least uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for quarter inch material. You'll probably be around 200 degrees for eighth of an inch. 
and three eighths of an inch thick and thicker, you're at a 400 plus degree Fahrenheit preheat. As in, you don't physically weld in this part until it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If you think that's very hot, you're right, it's miserable. But in my world, as a welding engineer, and the kind of stuff we weld on, this material you see over here, this is also 4130, the same alloy as those little plates you saw, except now it's very thick, and the weld is also very thick on top of it. This is Inconel on 4130 to be exact. You can see the stark difference in thicknesses. But this one up here, we actually preheat it to 600 degrees Fahrenheit and weld it around 700 most of the time. So we don't have a hard heat infected zone when we're done. That still requires a post weld heat treatment though or a stress relief afterwards. The material in this size territory, kind of yin and yangs between needing a high preheat or a post well heat treat or stress relief as some fabricators would call it. In the world of welding, those have a big parallel as in you relieve the internal stresses of the weldment by getting it hot. However, for welding specifically, because the heat affected zone is so hard, it is something called martensite, as in the metal is physically changed phases and has a very hard, brittle microstructure in that heat affected zone. And whenever you post weld heat treat it, it's at a high enough temperature to relax and convert that martensite down to a softer, more ductile grade of steel or grain structure, I should say. So this is an introduction to welding chromoly, 4130 and materials like it. I do it in my day job, uh, or at least I'm the welding engineer for a company that does. Uh, the actual welders and welding operators in my shop do a fantastic job of welding it. And for the little welding that I'm doing here, I'm paying homage to those guys doing hardcore work. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. I'm going to get this installed in the truck. I'm Nate from Good Mayhem Racing. I will see you out in the desert. If not my garage, like and subscribe for more.